Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 30 of the Horizon series. Now this week we're going to start looking at the Boosters recovery system and one of the really important things we have to do is figure out the actual size of the parachute that's going to bring it down safely. Now normally we'd use a parachute descent calculator. Uh, you just plug in the weight of your rocket, uh, you plug in the descent rate and out pops the size of the parachute. Now that might work well for things like the sustainer that uses a single parachute uh, but for our booster, uh, things get a little bit more complicated. Now, due to the size of the airframe, uh, there isn't a lot of room for a single large parachute. So we're actually using twin parachutes that are slightly smaller uh, and they get ejected sideways. And you can have a look at part 24 that explains uh, why we're doing that. So uh, the other problem is when you have twin parachutes, they don't exactly come down vertically. Uh, they actually tend to push apart because of the aerodynamics and because they get pushed apart, they end up being less efficient. Uh, we also have the issue that the booster is suspended horizontally, which creates more drag, which is good, but it also creates wake above the uh, booster, which interferes with the parachutes, making those less efficient. So it gets quite complicated. And so for that reason, we decided to build a one third scale model uh, of the booster uh, and also the weight is scaled appropriately so that we'll be able to do some drop tests and characterize what this actually the whole configuration looks like. So let's have a look. In order to get consistent repeated drops, we built a drop tower and put it on the second floor of Dad's house. It's essentially a giant fishing pole. The top of the pole is 9 meters or 30 feet above ground. We also made a release mechanism that can be raised and lowered with a string from the end of the pole. The mechanism itself has a pivoting pin and a spring-loaded catch. This catch is then controlled with a second string. The parachute has a loop of string in the top of it so it can slide onto this pin. This gives the parachute the best chance to open quickly. To gather data for each flight, we attached a barometric altimeter to the shock cord of one of the parachutes. It has a 1 foot resolution and samples altitude at 10 Hz. Once the altimeter is turned on, we can just raise the parachute and whatever is suspended under it all the way up to the end of the pole and then just release it by pulling the second string. Okay, let's do some tests. In the first test, we're dropping a concentrated mass that is the same weight as the one third scaled model of the booster. We expect the final weight of the booster to be just under six kilos, which when scaled to one third has an approximately scaled weight of 210 grams. We need to include the mass of the altimeter here as well. First, we're going to drop the mass with a single parachute only. This gives us a baseline descent rate for the parachute that removes any drag effects a horizontally suspended booster might add. We repeat this drop five times so that we can later average the results. It was a little windy on the day, but it was still possible to get good data. We just let the altimeter continuously record the data for all five flights. After the flights, we can plug the altimeter into the laptop and download the data. Here's the raw data from the altimeter for the five flights. We then chop it up into individual flights and run an averaging pass over it in a spreadsheet to remove some of the sampling noise. We then bring the data into the Fuse app and overlay each of the flights on top of each other. Then each flight is aligned in time so that we can compare all of the flights directly. Now we look only at the lower part of the flight since that's when the parachute is fully opened and the rocket is falling at close to terminal velocity. From this, we can extract the average slope or the descent rate. And here we're getting a descent rate of 5.28 meters per second. Now let's do that again, but this time with two parachutes. Both the parachutes are the same size and the overall size is about the ballpark figure that we'd expect the booster to need. We again did a number of drops capturing the descent rates with the altimeter. You can see how the two chutes get pushed apart as they fall. In the data for two parachutes and a concentrated mass, we get a descent rate of 3.56 meters per second. That's about 67% of the single parachute speed. Now it's time to replace the mass with a horizontally suspended booster. The weight distribution and the orientation of the booster is also approximate to what we would expect for the final booster to be. 
Here we're doing drop tests again with a single parachute, but with the booster suspended under it. From the data, we can see that the descent rate is at 4.03 meters per second, which is 76% of the speed of the concentrated mass. That means that the booster itself is providing quite a bit of drag. For the final set of tests, we use two parachutes and the booster. This is the final intended configuration for the actual booster itself. We're also looking at how stable the booster is under parachute, and it doesn't look like it rolls around too much, as we want it to land with one of the fins pointing straight down. You can again see how much the parachutes get pushed apart as the rocket falls. With these tests, we're not quite concerned with absolute descent rates. We're just interested in the relative descent rate of one versus two parachutes and the relative descent rate between just a concentrated mass and a horizontally suspended booster of the same mass. The descent rate for the two parachutes comes in at 2.98 meters per second, which is 26% slower than with one parachute with the booster. And here's all the data for the four tests. So looking at the test results, we can see that the booster will come down about 30 to 40% slower uh, than it would with a single parachute. And so the next part of the puzzle is we want to figure out how fast we want the booster to actually come in. Now, while it's typical for high power rockets to come in perhaps in the five to eight meters per second range uh, under main parachute, that is, uh, because this booster is a little bit more fragile, we want to come in probably in the three to five meter per second range. Now, the booster is going to drift uh, a little bit further, but we don't expect it to go more than maybe four or five hundred meters, uh, so that should be okay. So if one parachute opens, we should come in at probably the five meters per second range, and if they both open, we'll come in at the three meters per second. Because we want to come down at three meters per second under two parachutes, we now know for our booster, that's the equivalent of about 4.3 meters per second uh, for a single parachute with a concentrated mass. The last thing we need before we can work out the size is to choose the optimal design with a high drag coefficient. A higher drag coefficient means that we can use a smaller and more compact parachute than a lower drag one. We can see there are parachute designs with a drag coefficient of 2.2, which is higher than just a flat parachute at 0.75 or a hemispherical one at 1.5. Now let's plug everything into a descent rate calculator to get the size of the chute. So we put in 4.3 meters per second as the descent rate, the drag coefficient is 2.2, and the rocket weighs about 5.9 kilos. So we can see that we need a pair of parachutes that are 1.72 meters in diameter each or 67 inches. So the question is, do we attempt to make our own or do we buy a commercial parachute? Now, because the recovery of the booster is very important from a safety point of view, and we're dealing with much higher loads and speeds, we decided to go with a commercial product that's designed specifically for the job. Uh, trying to learn how to sew very slippery material and then having to do qualification testing to make sure that the parachutes are strong enough. Buying a commercial product uh, just made total sense here. But please let us know in the comments uh, whether you like to make your own parachutes or whether you just buy off the shelf ones. Although 67 inches is about what we need, off the shelf parachutes are not made in every size. So we need to choose the closest from what's available. Looking at high drag coefficient chutes, we can see that a single 60 inch parachute with a 13 pound load gives us a descent rate of around 16 feet per second, which is pretty close to what we need. 72 inches weighs more and is more expensive. And the next size down of 48 inches is too small if only one were to open. So 60 inches is our target size. These parachutes by Rocketman look pretty good and the weight is 285 grams. However, they also offer these 60 inch ultra light high performance parachutes with the same drag coefficient. These only weigh 100 grams and pack into a tiny space, about a quarter of the others. While the cost is quite high, it is a parachute we can use many times in other projects and it should work really well in this instance. Fruity Shoots also offers very similar shoots, but these are even more expensive. At the other end of the scale, we also looked at the 60 inch Aerocon parachute for $12 each, which is an absolute steal at that price. The reason we didn't go with these is partly because of the lower drag coefficient, but mostly because of the packed size and weight. At 400 grams each, that adds at about 800 grams to the booster and would markedly affect its performance. That's four times the weight of the Rocketman parachute. 
So these drop tests were actually done in November last year, uh, but we didn't order the parachute until March this year. So two and a half months later, uh, we received our custom parachutes from Rocketman. So thanks very much for that, buddy. Now I'm really impressed at the quality of how well these are made. Uh, and the material is actually really unusual. Uh, I think the ripstop nylon's either been coated with something or maybe has been calendared, uh, which means given a heat treatment that makes it shiny and also not porous. Now at 22 GSM, uh, that's super, super lightweight. Now, uh, the other aspect is that because it is so compact, uh, it'll easily fit into an 80 millimeter airframe. Um, so that's a huge advantage for us. Now, now that we have these parachutes, we'll be able to start designing the deployment mechanism around them. But that's for another video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Here are a few more details about the chutes. They pack into a space of 90 millimeters by about 40 millimeters. We filmed the parachute unfolding because we wanted to know how they packed it so tight at the factory. The shroud lines are 200 pound spectra coated in PTFE to prevent abrasion.